Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel and episode 11 of Ultraneurs Talk and Tea. Got an awesome guest with us, and that is a Timothy Sykes. So thanks for joining us. Hey, thanks for having me. Yeah, good. Um, so for those that don't know you, which isn't too isn't too many that probably won't know you on on our channel, um, do you want to give a brief intro about yourself? Sure. Um, you know, I trade low price stocks, which the whole world hates, and I love. They made me a millionaire many times over. I started with twelve thousand dollars. Now I made roughly five million, um, but it's a small niche, so I have scalability issues. So um, I'm never going to make a billion dollars, and I'm fine with that. I go back to twelve grand every year uh, to show uh, my students now how to grow their accounts. Um, so now I have thousands of students in over 120 countries. I love teaching. Uh, my top student has turned 1,500 into eight plus million, but he might be a robot or a clone sent from the future back in time when I'm like theoretically richer and I would send someone back in time to prove that my stuff is real. That, so, that rolled that's off, a theory. That, that rolled off the tongue. So Because so. it's a theory because it would make sense if I'm more successful in the future and cloning and time travel are possible, I would theoretically send someone back in time. This is that curveball <laughs> right I mean, now. No, I mean, it's just, this is, <laughs> this is reality. This is realistic. I mean, time travel is real, right? Endgame is like a documentary. There's definitely a debate that's needed with Elon Musk, um, Joe maybe, Rogan. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just saying like my top student, 1,500 to 8 million, it's not like possible for humans. It's somebody from the future or a robot or clone or something crazy is going on because he is a madman. There's a guy, what was it, am I right? And Prophet Lee, is like a Superman or? Superman is there too. Yeah, he's made so, a few million, but this is Tim Grittani. Um, literally, I took him to the Maldives one time just to celebrate like his first $100,000 profit. And we're getting drunk and we're celebrating and like literally he's, he's just watching the screen and I'm like trying to close the laptop and he's like, get away from me. And this is at that point, he was only up a hundred grand and he was yeah. so focused and I was like, scared if he's just like completely locked in yeah not doing anything. Yeah, yeah and now he's married with a kid it's beautiful so so when you said that um people don't like you know low price penny stocks w why is that have you seen the wolf of wall street have I you heard of the wolf of wall street slips have you heard like of that? jordan uh belford are the, are the commissions still the same though in regards to that no thing? so you know there's no 50 percent commissions anymore pink sheets are pretty much dead yeah um it's just a lot of low price stocks that are scams and they have one or two products they're very sketchy they have very little in the way of public filings anything they do file you have to take with a grain of salt so they're very sketchy yeah and it's... for me I don't care about their fundamentals. They just expect the worst out of every company and you're never disappointed. But the patterns are very predictable because mutual funds, yeah. hedge funds, big time traders don't trade this niche because like I said, there's scalability issues. So it's yeah. a bunch of fucking idiots trading these and you're competing against fucking idiots. Like yeah. I, I make the comparison. It's like competing against midgets in basketball. Have you ever played a midget in basketball? Oh, I definitely have not played a midget in basketball. If you want to play basketball, who would you choose? If you want to win the game, do you compete against like LeBron James or a midget? Good question, midget. <laughs> Correct. So for me, I'm competing against mental midgets in penny stocks. Okay, I love that analogy. That... Very politically correct. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm very introverted. I'm trying to work on like speaking my mind more. Yeah, Help, the... Thank you for helping me. No, yeah, great. This is actually an intervention. Yeah, that was, that, was a, that was a good one. Okay, wow, where do I go from there in regards to that question? Okay, fine. So um, my mental image is, is of, of, of midgets from basketball. I'm going to have to do a video sometime doing this yeah. to show it. But it's true. Yeah, like, that's what it is. Like, there's not much money comparatively. I mean, I've made a few million dollars. My top student has made a few million. You can live a great life with yeah. a few million. But, you know, in some of the niches that you trade, like, you can make a few million in, like, a day yeah. or a few hours. Yeah. So... It's just different stuff. But for me, that's why it's good for, you know, the average person with like two or $3,000. Yeah. I don't think they should be trading Google or uh, Amazon, like, you know, or Starbucks, like CNBC would have you believe because you're just not going to grow your account yeah. that much. And is that something that, so that was going to bring me on to the question of what, what made you, so when you started, did you initially start with penny stocks or did you start off with the blue chips and did you start off, what, what, why not maybe FX commodities? What, yeah. what made you steer in that direction? No, so I started off with blue chips and my account just wasn't going anywhere. You know, I had 12,000 then like next month it was like 11,900 then like 12,200 and I'm like, this is like mind numbing. Yeah. Um, and then I tried a little options, tried a little Forex. It's just not for me. So I gravitated towards lower price stocks and I got really good at it. I'll tell you my first pattern, you'll laugh at how simple it was. Um, my first year of trading, 1998, 1999, senior in high school, um, this is when the internet was just beginning. Yeah. Companies would add .com to their corporate name, right? Yeah. So Sportsman's Guide, 
They sell camping equipment online. They're still in business. They changed their name from Sportsman's Guide Inc. to Sportsman'sGuide.com, right? Big press release. The stock tripled, not in one day or one hour, but over three or four days as the news spread. And more and more companies started adding .com to their name. And I would just buy the stock at the end of day one and then sell into the spike on day two or day three. And I was like, this is, I mean, I would win every time. And now 20 years later, that exact same pattern popped up with Bitcoin and crypto when companies would merge with Bitcoin or start like a Bitcoin or crypto subsidiary, the stocks would triple, quadruple over three or four days. And I'm like, mind blown. 20 years later, different hype, different kind of stuff. Yeah, it wasn't there. There was a stock, wasn't there? Was it? I can't remember what market it was on. They, they... They did. It was like Long Island, Long Island Ice. Long Island Ice Tea. Yeah, yeah they, LTEA. Yeah, yeah. And they, they traded that. They, yeah, they say they was getting involved in Bitcoin yeah. or something. Like Kodak. That. Kodak was coming out with Kodak Coin, and the yeah. thing went. The thing quadrupled. So yeah. same kinds of patterns. And then they all crash and burn. All the dot coms crash and burn. All the Bitcoin stocks yeah. crash and burn. So I haven't even traded Bitcoin itself, but I've traded a lot of Bitcoin and crypto related stocks. Yeah. So for me, hype, there's yeah. just an inefficiency there. Like you know, if you're trading crypto or FX. Like these are basically like commodities or 24, yeah. five, 24, seven. Like I don't want that. I get too little sleep already. Yeah. Um, for me with penny stocks, because like we talked about, like, or like I mentioned very yeah. politically correctly, I'm competing against fucking idiots. Yeah. So they hear about the news, not in real time. They don't use real time scanners. Half the people in penny stocks don't even have real time quotes. Okay, this is just to show you how fucking incompetent they are. That's definitely got to be a YouTube title, competing against. (laughs) It is. It's just, I mean, it's true. Like, these people, literally, like, I get emails. They're like, oh, my God, I just lost, like, five grand. I didn't realize my quotes were, like, 20 minutes delayed. And I'm like, how are you trading on delayed data? Like, they don't even know. So I'm just teaching these people, like, bare basics, but it helps them. And... Okay, so in respect to that, do you think that the, the whole pattern side of things, do you, do you reckon that that's, it's going to be the same audience in that market forever just because, you know, funds aren't going to get involved in that yeah. sort of area? But There's know. always going to be idiots who need education. And I say that lovingly. But a lot of financially naive people need education. That's why I got into becoming a teacher. I was in this yeah. TV show, Wall Street Warriors, that was like a big hit because I was drunk in every episode and, you know, I have a big mouth, as you can tell. Um, but the people started emailing me like how do you turn a few thousand into a few million and i saw the need because again most people who teach in my niche especially are just fakes they're frauds they don't make millions of dollars they never have they never will so for me i have i continue to and i just have to show it step by step even when i'm wrong like today i sold my stock way too soon before i came here to see you i made a few trades i made like 1200 bucks sold way too soon Stock is now up even more. Everyone's like, why are you like selling so soon? You know, if I can make a thousand dollars a day, that's that's a good yeah. living. Yeah. No, no, hundred percent makes sense. I was thinking there's a couple of um off the top of my head that I know there's some ETFs and stuff like that in the UK that invest into small cap. I'm not so sure about the US. Not even stocks. small cap. Like try like micro cap or nano cap. There's no ETFs. Yeah. No one gives a shit about my niche. It's, it's interesting. Isn't it's it? crazy to me. Yeah. Like they don't most people think like when they hear about me or penny stocks they're just like oh it's a scam you know he's just pumping up these penny stocks like they don't realize i trade with a small account i donate all my trading profits to charity i'm trying to show the process like i talked about just with the dot coms and the bitcoin that's one pattern but i have dozens of patterns and you see the patterns repeat because it's idiots lots of idiots who just have no money or very little money and they need education do you think that the things that are moving these stocks are such that, you know, like press releases, or we, we may find oil. Yeah, we, 100%. We found this. and We found a billion barrels of oil. <laughs> we found the biggest gold deposit ever. And these companies put this stuff out with little disclaimers at the yeah. bottom that, you know, the financially naive don't even read the disclaimers. Yeah. Um, they're being marketed to with, you know, press releases and analyst reports, even though it's not real analysts. It's just people who are getting compensated in cash yeah. or stock. And they just get suckered again and again. The sad way that I find a lot of my students is they lose half or all their money on some scam. They start Googling and they see a blog post that I wrote about the scam six months ago warning them, but they didn't know about me. Yeah. So then they've lost all their money, but then they're like, oh shit, that's time stamped. So for me, I have 8,000 blog posts, like 100,000 tweets, and I just time stamp everything. So you can see that like I'm trying to warn you ahead of time, yeah. but people still fight me. That's why I tried. I tried doing that personally because I, I do some contribution on Forbes, and so all of mine were time stamped in yeah. regards to that. more blue chips, like thirty to forty percent moves over a few months. So very much, you know, lower um, 
percentage moves than what you're looking yeah. at. But I think it's important to make sure everything is time stamped with your time stamps and... change everything. Okay, if you look at like yeah. some people who are on TV, there's an ugly bald man who says bye bye bye, and he's right about 35 percent of the time. If you look <laughs> at his stuff, like yeah. literally, you can roll the dice and be better than him, yeah. but it won't be as entertaining. Okay, so on Ultra Let's Talk we try to get uh, five tips. Uh, I'll try to get them out of you throughout the throughout the whole interview. So, sure. say tip one: What would you give to aspiring traders? Is something that they should take into account before they start their journey? So, rule number one, lesson number one uh, for me: It doesn't matter if I'm competing against mental midgets. It doesn't matter how sure I am. You like that analogy, <laughs> don't you? Yeah. It doesn't matter what the trade is or who I'm competing against. Rule number one, cut losses quickly, okay? I can be wrong on any stock. I don't care what my research says. I might short sell a scam. I short sell a lot of these stocks because I expect them to go to zero. Yep. Sometimes the scam can last more weeks and months than you expect. Um, sometimes I, I see a company that has a good technology. Uh, spider silk is this okay. new technology. KBLB is this piece of shit little penny stock that I've been buying. And they have this spider silk. And I'm picturing like millions of little spiders like making silk. And it's ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. But they partner with Polar Tech, which is a multi-billion okay. dollar company. The CEO of Polar Tech put out a good press release. But the stock wasn't acting well. So I got out. I made about three grand. And I was just like, I really had conviction in this idea. But it, yeah, the it price action wasn't out. good. Two weeks later, the stock tripled. So I was on okay. the right track. I was off on my timing. Doesn't matter. Rule number one, get out when you're in doubt or cut losses quickly. I had a profit on that one. So it doesn't have to just be a loss. But if the stock is not doing what you want, just get out. You so, can always get back in. So that's number one. Yeah. Cut losses. Um, and or get when out. in doubt, get out. Yeah, when in doubt, get out. Good terminology. Okay, so that's that's mega. So obviously you started, what, what kind of actually got you into trading stocks in the first place? What, what Why did you go down that route? Why didn't you go down the you know, I'm not going to say it's a bad thing. Go down the whole nine till five, get a job yeah. after you finish your degree. I mean, this was high school. I was a yeah. tennis player. Um, I had surgery on my arm. So uh, okay. I had Tommy John surgery. They take something out of your other arm. So I'm walking around school like fucking RoboCop. And I couldn't play tennis. I was already into college early admission. So my parents gave me control of my bar mitzvah money. Okay. And they thought that I would lose it all. They thought that it would be a good lesson for me. This is like my parents' okay. like tough love. Well, yeah. And instead, I turned the 12000 into into 100000 uh, senior year of high school, and then a little under 800000 freshman year in college. And then I was hooked. Like my, yeah. you know, I'm Jewish, okay. so my greedy genes took over. Yeah. And I was just like, I want more money because that's what I was born to do. Okay, that great, great explanation of how you got into it. So the lesson that you were supposed to learn, you didn't really learn, you just kind of found your feet of where you I wanted to go. I became obsessed with patterns. And this is, you know, lesson number two for you guys. Whatever you study, you have to become obsessed. You have to be addicted to it. It's not about like having a life, yeah. work-life balance, 100%. like nine to five, then you clock out. Like if you want to learn something and you want to master something, I've made a few million dollars in my life. It's not even like the biggest thing yeah, yeah. for you know trading purposes, but for yeah. penny stocks, it's pretty good. Yeah. But I became obsessed with learning. Yeah. And if you want to make the most money, you have to first get as much knowledge as you can. I 100% agree. It's like um, I say all the time about Elon Musk, the 100-hour work week of just constantly putting so much more time in. It's something along the lines of what would take you a year. Um, it would take someone two and a half years to achieve. You can do it in a year yeah. if you're doing 100-hour yeah. work week because everyone else is doing 40. But you, you don't want to burn out too. Yeah. So it's there is a Sounds little bit of a balance where you don't want to ruin your health. Like yeah. I get a lot of people that are like, yeah, I believe in it 100%. And like, I didn't even sleep last night. I'm like, calm down. Like, Did you go through that phase yourself? Um, I mean, I've pulled all nighters before, like when uh, a lot of the time when I'm writing like blog posts and I'm exposing these stocks and I'm like, oh, I'm going to get these guys. Oh, my God. Yeah. And like they, they basically say that they're scams in their own SEC filings, which people don't read, you know, because, again, people don't even I know. I thought the SEC would have been a bit tougher on that. Well, they don't say that they're doing anything yeah, illegal, yeah. but they say like, we have no cash. We're going to be out of business in the next three months unless we raise a lot of money. You know, we hope that there's gold, but there's like a 0.007% chance. And these are in the legal filings. Then compare that to the press releases. The company says, we are going to find gold. Like, yeah. so people read these one pagers. This is lesson number three. Um, don't just look at what management says or what a press release says always expect them to yeah. be basically like cheerleaders. Like they're yeah. never going to tell you the truth. The day before Bear Stearns collapsed, the CEO or CFO yeah. was on CNBC saying, everything's fine, everything's, yeah. and the yeah. next day, bankrupt. Yeah, like well, they're, they, they're never going to gonna admit more. that. Yeah. So yeah. legal filings might be long, but they're worth reading, especially when you see like the ugly, grim reality. 
Do you um do you find that obviously short selling on, on a stock, do you find it sometimes hard to get that kind of borrow to be able to do Correct. that? Correct. So this is part of the reason why I became a teacher. Otherwise I would just short scams and you know run some giant fund out of the Cayman Islands and not tell anybody. Uh, but there aren't that many shares available to short on a lot of these penny stocks. I have a whole music video called No Borrow, No Cry. Right. This is my kind of creativity <laughs> and just too much time on my hands and too much money. Um, so you can link that. We're going to link that. No borrow, no cry. You're going to no laugh borrow, at this. No cry. I have four music videos just because I'm bored with life. And, and it's all about penny stocks. Yeah. They're all like little penny stock analogies. I spoofed this Rihanna video and it was like this girl was trying to trade and she gets frustrated and she throws a laptop and like, and she gets undressed in a jacuzzi. I don't know. I just, I go with it. Okay. Fair, fair enough. So obviously you've got all this going on. You're, you're in a limited market and you've got your students now that you're dedicating your time to, to help increase um their earnings their revenue and you post your trades don't you yeah. so that the other guys can see them is yeah. that right and, yeah it's and all full transparency you can see my income tax returns audits trades um again i trade with a small account so it's not like i'm being that brave like i'm not showing like a 20 million dollar trading account yeah um but for me it's the process like how do you make a hundred dollars or two hundred dollars in a day on a two or three thousand dollar account that's useful yeah no 100%. especially consistently not just once yeah. You know, like I want something that's going to win six, maybe seven, maybe eight times out of 10. It doesn't matter if one time it doesn't work or two times it doesn't work. Um, it's like, what can make you more over the long run and how can you manage your risk? Yeah. Some people like just want to make as much money as possible, but they can't manage the risk. They can't yeah. cut their losses. Exactly. So I would never take that trade. Your, your risk is unlimited, yeah. especially yeah. with short selling some of these penny stocks. Yeah, 100% get that. So for the guys that don't know, um, where can they access that information? Just Google Timothy Sykes. Okay. And it's, just, just have fun. Just Google me. Literally and... 8,000 blog posts. Like I have literally 100,000 plus tweets. I just looked the other day. I was like, that's Jeez. that's a lot of tweets. Yeah, but so... I like posting all this stuff. I have a lot of uh, posts and links. And, you know, I've written for Forbes and Inc. So you yeah. have articles there. And then I have 1,000 plus YouTube videos uh, on yeah. my YouTube channel too. So a lot of people think I'm full of BS. So I'm like, okay, here, yeah, watch all this stuff there. for free. Yeah. Get that. It's fine. What, what about your charity work that you're doing? Because that's something that caught my attention. Yeah. I think that's really awesome. I've been keeping up to tell Thank us that, you. but for the guys that don't yeah. know. So this is what's interesting. So I have all these free videos on YouTube, but because they're free, people don't place much value in them. So I'm like, yeah. all right, how do I get people to learn? I have all this stuff where you can pay a little bit of money for video lessons or alerts or watch yeah. list, stuff like that. But some people are like, no, I don't want to pay. I'm like, okay, here's free videos. And they're like, no, no, it's free. There's no value. And I was like, all right, so you don't want to pay. You're not going to watch free. What do I do? So I created this guide if you go to how to make millions.com yeah. uh, it's $300 35 hours uh, of a guide all goes to charity okay. um, and that way people pay for it so they're invested in it okay, well. but I don't get the money so people who hate me still don't feel like they're enriching me so they're yeah. fine with that yeah. and then they learn so I'm fine with that so we've this one stupid guide for my haters yeah um, has raised over three million dollars now wow. um, and it's it's fantastic and it's a very useful guide it's everything that I've learned um, and now this one guide started my charity, the Timothy Sykes Foundation, then started donating my own money. Um, my goal is to build a thousand schools around the world. We've built uh, 52 schools so far. I love so, that. And then we started getting into animals. We just came back from uh, South Africa uh, in a whole campaign uh, to save the rhino. We did a documentary yeah. um, that got 30 plus million views. So that kind of went viral. Right now we're working on a new documentary called Save the Reef. Um, so in about a month, month and a half we're gonna have a big documentary on why the coral reef matters that do you know amazing. why the coral reef matters go for it do you know anything about the coral reef no not too much no so did you know that the majority the of the algae. oxygen we breathe from the algae? comes from correct yeah. there you go so you know yeah. right well i didn't know where he was going but most, <laughs> most people think like it's just trees yeah. trees represent roughly 40 45 percent it's marine life 60 yeah. 65 70 percent of the oxygen we breathe yeah. and we don't even know we haven't even explored much it's like crazy yeah. and it's dying yeah we've got like what another three or four degrees in temperature to go and then it's gone 100 percent. a un yeah. report just came out like yesterday saying like there's going to be a million species that are going to be basically extinct at the current rates yeah they're working i think on that at the moment trying to get a um kind of like a hybrid algae to survive yeah. in the temperature that's a bit higher i mean but... we'll, we'll try anything but it's not yeah. even just about that like there's stuff that people at home can do like with sunscreen right there's su two chemicals oxybenzenone and something else that i can't even pronounce but if you have the sunscreen with the stuff on it and you go in the water it basically kills the reef and kills a lot of the marine life and even if you don't go in the water you wash it off in the shower it still eventually finds its, it's way to the ocean, ocean. 
Yeah. So working on a documentary of that. So Simple animals, things. charities, coral reefs. Just something that. for me to, you know, and, a new and challenge. How much time do you spend doing that? Like where, where, you know, that's probably something these guys are probably wondering. You know, you're saying don't burn yourself out and everything like yeah. that. You've got your, you've got your trading, you've got your education, you've got your research to your trading, and then you've got your and charity. Traveling. And then you've got traveling. So I've like- 122 countries now. I'm running is, out of countries. That is really um, good. I, I, it goes back to doing what you love and focusing on what you love and, and being obsessed. Um, I couldn't just like build one school. When I built one school, I was like, I need to build more and then I need to build more. Yeah. And then I tweeted it because it wasn't doing well on social media. So I was like, all right, retweet this. I did a video of my first school opening in Bali and I was like, retweet this. And for every retweet, I'll build another school, right? And normally my charity posts get like two retweets. So I was like, oh, maybe I'll get like 20. And it's gotten like 8,000 now. Um, people are like, yo, you better delete that tweet. And I was like, and I was like, no, fuck it. Like, let me pin it. So now that's my pin tweet. And it keeps getting more retweets, so I'm on like the hook for you know eight thousand schools, which is going to take me a while, but yeah. might as well do it. No, that's a serious goal. That's a serious goal. So, um, what what tips are we up to now? We're on like I, I think I think we're on like three something along those lines. Um, so, what kind of what what's next? Like, is this is this it now for the for the is Timothy Sykes for the for the rest of for the rest of your life now? It's it's building the schools, it's doing the charity work, and growing the education. Is there anything else that's <laughs> not, that, not that there's not that you're not doing a it's lot literally but. whatever comes up like i mean I'd, i didn't expect uh saving the reef to be important i don't even like putting my head underwater like i'm you know that's not my kind of thing but it came up uh, you don't like in, you don't like swimming in general no, no i don't do that shit so literally it's fantastic i actually love this cause the most because i can focus on trading and i take all these big groups out and they're all swimming and they're all like diving and filming and i was like yo do your thing I'll produce this documentary. I'll pay for it all. I'm like a quarter million dollars in. Screw it. Why not? But I get to do work yeah. while they do that. And I get to, you know, take part in the final product because I'm editing it. Um, I think life isn't about specific things or limitations. Like you should just try everything and see how it feels. And if you yeah. get rich, you have more freedom to try more stuff. Yeah. So it's good to be rich. I agree that you got you could definitely got more options of what you can do and how exactly. you can help other people. Most people so hate their jobs. If you look at studies, seventy five to eighty percent of people yeah. under the age of thirty hate their jobs. Yeah. And you spend the majority of your life at your job. Yeah. So the majority of your life doing something the the majority of people hate yeah. You're, they're just miserable. This is why pharmaceutical companies are doing so well. Like yeah. you know, like we need to get more people rich, but it's not easy to get rich. Everybody wants to be rich, but they don't really want to put in the time. They're busy playing Fortnite, watching Netflix, yeah. living in these fantasies. Why are fantasies so popular? Yeah. Why is Endgame so popular? Why is Game of Thrones? Because yeah. it's fantasy, because it's not their life. Yeah, it takes them away from the current circumstances so that they're in. So what right? if we focus on our current circumstances? What if we focus more on education and bettering our planet? And that way, you know, we can live the dream life. We don't have to go you know look for some mythical superheroes do you think do you think that um it comes into this it's just a it's a it's a lack of knowledge of knowing that they can do it or do you think there's actually limiting beliefs and psychology behind it at, at a base level it's a mix you know um definitely people don't believe that it can happen to them like i'm just a normal guy i'm from a small town in connecticut i didn't really believe that it could happen to me until it did but when i saw it happen to me and now it's happened to several of my students I'm like, oh wait, there's something here. Yeah. Um, and one of my, you know, newest top students, Roland, he started with four thousand. I think he's up to like eight hundred thousand now in like two or three years. And he said, I only got into this because I started seeing more of your other students doing it. Yeah. And then some other students were like, I saw Roland doing it. So the more that you see that this stuff can happen, and it's not yeah. everybody. You know, if you look at industry stats, ninety percent of traders lose money. Yeah. So you need to recognize that it can happen but in order to do that you're gonna have to grind you're gonna have to work so hard like this yeah. is why i have six thousand video lessons yeah. you know some people are like can i play them at double speed i was like shut the fuck up play them at half speed <laughs> like punish yourself i'm like david goggins you <laughs> yeah, know yeah, yeah when your knees are bleeding <laughs> that's when you run more yeah, yeah exactly. so you need to like you know figure out that like pain is not the end of the world it's your kind of fear and your laziness that really hurts you in life and your future. Yeah, it's like trying to it's trying to shift a culture change at the same time, right? That's it's a mental shift too. Like a lot of this is just mindset, you know? Like you you don't think that you can do it, so you don't do it. 
and then you don't do it and then you're unhappy. It's like a vicious cycle, right? But yeah. if you can start to believe, wow, wait a minute, I do believe I can do this. Yeah. Um, and then you start maybe seeing a little bit and obviously like there's ups and downs, like no one just makes all the money right away. Like 90% yeah. of traders lose, but 100% of traders lose right away at the start. But you're learning what not to do. Like that's how you learn. So you need to have patience. Let's talk. Let's talk. So that's, that's amazing. Let's let's talk about the overall industry because I I'm a strong believer that in this industry it's a very um, I don't know. There's a lot of misdirection I think yeah, from misinformation di exactly, and I think it's a, a massive struggle. There's a lot of people pretending to be people. This whole thing with binary options is a joke, oh, yeah, yeah. and it's kind of got out of hand. So as an influencer as well in the sector what do you feel that you can do we can do that could actually kind of cut through the noise cut through this stop them and kind of keep them at bay i don't think you can stop them there's you know this is the internet this is like the wild west back in the 1800s like you know <laughs> yeah. people had like magical medical cures and they really just put like cocaine in your coffee yeah um anything can happen in this industry but I think that, again, the more that you study someone, the more that yeah. you see their trades, you see their process, yeah. like anyone can just like rent a fancy car for the day, but did they rent it or did they actually buy it? Yeah. Like, how did they buy it? What money did they use to like yeah. get that car? Like, are they showing their trades? Like, this yeah. is why I'm fully transparent. You can see 20 plus years of my trades. It's ridiculous. Like I show some of my trades, like I make $25 and you can see the details of it yeah. from like 17 years ago. Yeah. Um, so transparency is good. And then also like you just, again, as is a cynical approach, but with penny stocks, like you have to expect the worst out of the companies, expect the worst out of everybody in trading and you'll yeah. never be disappointed. Like go in thinking like this person is a scam and they have to yeah. prove that they're not like they're guilty before yeah. proven innocent. Yeah. And that's the sad reality. But at least that way you can, you know, not be fooled. Like if you look at like the biggest scammer in history, Bernie Madoff, he was chairman of the fucking NASDAQ. Right. And he was a total fraud and he's yeah. chairman of like one of the biggest shit. So if that can happen, anybody can yeah, do this yeah. and he fooled people for decades. Yeah. So just expect the worst, you know, look somebody in the eye and be like, you're a fucking scam, but I'll give you a chance to prove that I'm wrong. Yeah. Okay. And then we'll see what they can do. Having a lot of YouTube videos, having a lot of real students, like yeah. people use make up names like, like, Hey, I'm Joe. I made a million dollars following this stuff. Like <laughs> yeah, yeah. who's Joe? Like yeah. use real names. A lot of people yeah. are shocked that I use like my students, real names, like real photos, real videos. Yeah. I'm like, this is them. I have some students who have made a lot of money. They don't want to be on the internet. That's fine. Yeah, like when you yeah. make a lot of money, privacy concerns, I get that. Yeah. But I, you know, for me, this is like a battle between like good and evil, like real versus fake. Yeah. So when I say like, look, here's a student, like this is a real person. This is not yeah. a made up name or an actor. Like some people are like, oh, your top students, those are just paid actors. And I was like, first of all, a lot of my students are introverted as fuck. If I was going to hire an actor, I would have hired somebody who can actually speak, not this <laughs> fucking weird robot guy. Um, I don't hire actors. I don't hire we're, anybody. We were talking about this. We've, we've been filming a series of where we take 18 random Joes with no background in the Forex markets basically and then we, we teach them how to trade Forex and we then give them capital to trade and we're yeah. saying that the winners with the feedback that we're fully expecting is to say that those guys are paid actors Yo, they're like what you were saying but is they're like the weirdest people ever like yeah. the most successful traders that I know have no like ability to communicate like they're like aliens or clones or from the future something like that they have some some issue you know <laughs> they're basically autistic like the most the best traders that i know it's like fucking yep. rain man so yep. that's another problem with like who's really good and who's not do you think they could step up on like regulation and stuff like that because that's something that we talk about transparency verifying in your stats um being regulated and making sure that you're like top of your game. Do you think that's something that should be, you know, these guys should clamp down more on in the regulatory space? You know, I, maybe, but again, like it's just like put penny stocks. There's always going to be another like sketchy penny yeah. stock or another scam popping up. It's like whack-a-mole, right? It's like that game yeah. and there's always going to be something else. Mm -hmm what we can do is educate the public and talk about this stuff more. Um, the beauty and the gift and the curse of the internet is that like, you're going to have good eggs and bad eggs. There's always going to be somebody yeah. new, always going to be something you can't regulate out everybody, 
but you can educate everybody. And if more people learn to read disclaimers and they read this stuff, like a lot of these penny stocks, it's laughable. Yeah. Like you read a 15 page yeah, was... analyst report and then at the bottom is like, this is not an analyst report, this is paid marketing, we've been paid $300,000 and people don't read it. Yeah, and they're yeah. just believing everything. Like, all, all the right wording as well, like potentially. Yeah. Uh, you know, potentially we will find this a uh, best case scenario. You should see some of my Twitter fights. I'm com I'm like fighting with either like promoters or like these mental midgets. Like I'm like, look at this, you fucking moron. Like this is a promoted email, and they're like, no, you're just jealous. The technology is great. I was like, here's an email. <laughs> I'm looking at it. Here's the disclaimer, and they're like, that doesn't matter. What matters is the technology in this press release. And I'm like, I give up. Like I've I've I I've fought against so many morons on Twitter who sadly go down the tubes. And then six months yeah. later, a year later, they're like, you were right. And I'm like, I don't want to be right like after you lose all your money. Yeah. Just I understand I'm trying to help you. Yeah. So if you create a business based on helping people, like I might be a little crude in my definitions, but I'm just trying to like wake yeah, people yeah. the fuck up, right? I'm like Jewish Morpheus. I'm <laughs> Would you sit there and try and come up with these terminologies? Like, he's like, like, right, that one's going. Jewish to Morpheus. <laughs> I was going to say Jufius, but I don't, I don't know if that would translate. So I, I tell you what, guys, if if you want Timothy Sykes to come and educate you in London at some point, click this thumbs thumbs up on the video, um, and let's try and get as many likes as possible to get Tim. Um, back to London to come and talk to you guys. Do you have any events planned in London or anything like that? Fuck you no. just, I'm eating too sushi. Busy, too busy I'm traveling. Eating sushi. Yeah. I like eating sushi, so that's what I'm doing. Um, you have a lot of good sushi here in London. I'm I'm actually pleasantly surprised. Um, yeah. But I just have meetings, and you know, I'm meeting with people. Like I'll I'll come back. I love this time zone. I've been in Asia a lot. Like yeah. it's a tough time zone to trade from. I'm only yeah. U.S. Uh, stocks, so I'm good. New York time. Like mm. in the middle of the night, I'm like I'm crazy by the end of that. Yeah. Um, but I love Europe. It's fantastic. The stock market opens in the afternoon. I woke up today like at noon. I'm like, yo, this is fucking great. Yeah, yeah, you get to see absolutely everything. Um, yeah, and again, you get the, you get your late in and everything. You get to start like see, the Th I think Th Thailand for us was, was pretty good. I don't know. If, I think for you that would have been again that would have been much later. What? It? When you were trading in Sri Panwar and stuff like that, you must. It was rough. Yeah, it's rough. Yeah, Asia's day, rough. So. I love Asia, but you know, I'll try and trade from anywhere. Like yeah. I, I literally just bring my laptop, laptop lifestyle for life, um, or maybe some new invention coming out. Do you, do you find that is it? Do you think it's easier to trade penny stocks in the U.S. if you're predominantly in the U.S. or do you think that the access and the availability of information is now, you know, anyone in the world can get access to this, can get the right trading yeah, accounts? Yeah, it's everything. global. I mean, anybody can do this. Like the internet makes it all available to everybody. And this is the beautiful thing, like Wi-Fi and new technologies are only gonna get faster. The computers are only gonna get faster. It's gonna get easier to do this. We're all tapped into this. Yeah. They'll probably all destroy us in like 2027. Like when, you know, AI is too smart. Everyone I talk to and interview about that, AI, everyone's just shit I mean, it's scared. true. Yeah. AI is getting smarter and smarter. If you read some of these books, yeah, like- You're they, saying 2027, because that's when it's smarter. I have no then. idea. I think it's like, I think you're not far off. I think it's around that time 2045 when 2045 is supposedly the singularity where we're going to be able to live forever, except AI will probably kill us. Like, all I know is that get rich and fucking enjoy while we can until we're all like fucking slaves for the machines. And then we can't do anything. Then we can't get rich, we can't enjoy, we can't even think on our own. So that should motivate people even more to study now rather than yep. later. Like Netflix will probably kill us. We don't even realize it. Netflix is probably gonna be like the king of everything or Amazon. If they sort their debt out, that's for sure. I, you yeah. know, <laughs> it doesn't even matter. They'll fucking wipe out the debt. The robots will figure it out with some crazy algorithm. They're gonna take like a penny off everybody's order. <laughs> Do you think that that's something that could be a future threat to penny stocks is AI? As in, in the marketplace, like you, what you're doing right now, do you think that someone could come along, I love algorithms myself, but do you think someone could come along, look at the pattern that you're analyzing, build something that's automated around that? Or do you think because you're digesting the, the press releases? No, the I drops? had hoped when I first got started teaching, I had hoped to collapse all the patterns. I was like, all right, I'm gonna make them so popular that they're not gonna work anymore and I'll get fantastically yeah. rich teaching people. Well, I've gotten richer teaching people, but the patterns are the exact same. Um, it's a gift and the curse because mm. I like, when I see a good pattern, like my whole rest of my life shuts down. I don't care if I'm at beautiful Sri Pond Mall, it doesn't matter. I don't move from the computer because I know that the odds are so good on my go-to patterns. Yeah. And so it's a gift and curse. I missed my college graduation for a fucking stock trade and I can never get that back. I made several thousand dollars, it was good, yeah. but 
you know, sometimes you have to live. And for me, I feel guilty missing these good trades because yeah. they don't come about every day. Yeah. Like you say, like, how do I do all this stuff? I'm not like a Forex trader or options trader or something like where there's always something moving every day. Yeah. Some days I, do, I just don't trade. Yeah. Some weeks I don't trade when there's no great setups. Yeah. Um, so I wanted it to stop. I still want it to stop. I hope that I can get more people taking advantage of these patterns. There's just not enough money. Yeah. The problem is like even my best students, they make maybe one or two million a year. All the smartest people like don't give a shit about a million or two. So the smart people look down on this and I'm compared, I'm forced to compete against fucking idiots. Surely the more people though that for example that are getting involved with this, so say for example short selling, yeah. the less likelihood that someone else is going to be able to get that fill in that position. So, so this is what's interesting. So it's kind of like, um, like oil, right? Like if you like try to like damp out oil, it creates like new little bubbles, yeah. right? And this is what's happening. So I have a lot of people who believe in my patterns and a lot of people who think I'm just full of shit. So literally like it creates a whole bunch of longs and a whole bunch of shorts and it creates more liquidity and more okay. volatility. Like right now, um, a lot of my DVDs are based on short selling. I very rarely short in this market because the yeah. past few years has just been a strong bull market. Yeah. So for me, the risk reward has changed where I don't think it's good for newbies to short sell penny stocks because before penny stocks would go, maybe best case scenario, they go from like 50 cents to like $4, like eight times your money in a few days. Yeah. Best case. Yeah. But because so many people became short sellers based on my DVD guides doing so well, and they're primarily short sellers. So now a stock that goes from 50 cents to $4, everyone's like, ooh, I know this pattern, let me short it. Yeah. And then it doesn't go down and they get squeezed and it goes to 20. Yeah. And so now the pendulum has kind of changed and now yeah. it actually is beneficial to go long. So the patterns haven't ended, they've just mutated a little bit. And for me, this is why I don't teach people to memorize patterns, I want them to learn like what yeah. is a short squeeze, why is it doing this? Yeah. Like I have a pattern that's first green day, I like to buy stocks, like the dot com names, yeah. buy at 350, 355 PM Eastern, sell the next morning as lots of idiots or lots of like latecomers see yeah. the news overnight yeah. and they put yeah. in their order. Yeah. But now the idiots have gotten a little smarter. So now they're not buying the next day, they're buying into the close because they say, oh, this is Tim's first green day. So now I'm buying it at 3 p.m. Eastern and selling at 3.50 p.m. when yeah, everybody yeah, else is buying. Yeah. So the patterns shift a little bit. And yeah. that's like, I mean, it's not good or bad, it's yeah, just the way nature, that it is. It's just how things mold. Do you think the bull market's due to Trump and stuff like that game? Fuck, I, you know, I thought the bull market would end. I've been playing it so safe the past few years and I missed yeah. out on like, especially 2019, the run up. I did not see that coming. Yeah. Um, I've just learned to just go with it and, you know, enjoy it until it like to switch in the next couple of years. I mean, it's just like the machines have to kill us. Like, you know, we know that it's coming. You don't know when. So are the machines yeah. going to kill us in 2027, 2057, 2097? Yeah. For, all we can do is fucking live until we die. <laughs> Right? So it sounds so pessimistic. But it's what true. I'm a, I trade penny stocks. I've seen more scams and more fakers and more frauds than anybody. You can't worry about when it's going to end. Like, yeah. I want it to end. I would love like a year off. If I could, if you offered me like three wishes, right? If you were like Aladdin for yeah. a day and yeah. you're all blue and Will Smith and weird, right? <laughs> Will Smith. Have you seen Will Smith as Aladdin? I have it, I have oh, it. it's going to scare you. It's going to haunt you. He's Aladdin. <laughs> And he's blue. Right, it's okay. really messed up. But he grants, you know, yeah, he wishes. wishes. So if you yeah. could grant me a wish, I would say take a year off from this bull market or two years off. Let me get organized because I just keep pounding more video yeah. lessons. There's more trades, more watch lists, more students. And I'm like, fuck, when does it end? In a bear market, there's less plays for me, which I'm grateful for. And I've been waiting for this bear market that just hasn't come. I was so excited at the end of 2018 when everything's crashing. I was like, yes, yeah, yeah, let yeah. it begin, let it begin. Yeah, and yeah. then we bounce right back to the highs. And yeah. I'm just like, Boom. yeah. So, yeah. You just can't take that into account. I don't try to guess the market, you know? Let's try and get one more tip because we're conscious of time. Yeah. So one more tip for guys aspiring traders that are getting into the markets. One more tip from yourself. What about girls? <laughs> girls as well. Do you have a lot of girl students? To be fair, no, we've probably, do you know what, that's one thing that we feel that we, we try to work on the whole equality side in, in our student base. We probably, I would say 10%, 15% tops is females. Yeah, I'm like 5%. I think okay. a lot of the jokes, I just offend them or something. I don't know. 
Yeah, it, it could it's be just that. <laughs> if you look at stats, like females are actually statistically better. Like yeah, if you look at you saw the SAC side, right. capital lawsuit where the guy was taking like growth hormone pills to try to be more like a female. No, yeah, it was messed up. What the heck? Yeah, 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 that, that happens. Is this is the stuff that happens. Um, one more tip you want? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> have fun with this. You gotta have fun. Like some people are like, oh, Tim, like your jokes are so wrong. Like you can give a cre you can give cre I'm, cre you know, you I'm looking at little flickering green and red things my entire fucking life. I lost my mind like seven years ago, maybe eight years ago at this rate. Um, you just gotta have fun. Like life is too short to be all worried about this snowflake generation and pissing people off. Like I say this all in good fun. I'm grateful for all the opportunities. I'm grateful for all the students. I'm grateful for all the mental midgets. Like, you know, yeah. I invite mental midgets to come to me and I'll try to make them taller mentally. Yeah. You know, I'm like, <laughs> okay, guys, I, like I said, absolutely probably one of the most craziest interviews we've done. Uh, Sam, Samuel K train. Very uh, serious. <laughs> yeah. No entertainment. Yeah. This is serious. Is business yeah well, i'm fucking mental <laughs> that's uh everyone that's timothy sykes if, if they want to get hold of you or reach out to you just google timothy sykes um on the instagram most google media. is timothy sykes a scam that's the first thing that i want you guys to google yeah. G google that there's one. video lessons actually this is we'll end on this <laughs> you've got a video we'll lesson on, on that yeah, yeah of course <laughs> i did a whole video of, am i a scam okay. and i say like am i a scam here's the argument for me being a scam. for and against I, I go for and against. It's a 20 minute video. <laughs> okay. You know, I'm like, okay, maybe, maybe they have a point. But then I'm like, oh shit, I am Timothy Sykes. I'm not a scam. So let yeah. me like show that. But no, my first millionaire student, literally, I found him because he wrote a blog post that said, Timothy Sykes is full of BS. It's still up there. Yeah. And I was like, oh, who is this motherfucker? So I'm going back and forth in the comments with him. There's like 60 comments. Yeah. He finally gave my DVDs a chance. He's made now $2 million my godfather to his baby like it's beautiful so if you can turn your haters into fans or turn yeah. them into millionaires like that's fantastic Fine. the blog post is still up you should read it you're oh, gonna laugh I'll, I'll give it i'll give it a go yeah absolutely fantastic story everyone that's timothy sykes and thanks for joining us oh wow, thanks for having yeah, me man a lot. It's been a i'll pleasure. try to be more extroverted next time i'm working <laughs> on it i'm taking acting lessons Hey, Tim Sykes, millionaire, mentor, and trader. Thank you for watching my videos. I hope that they help you. I want to share everything that I've learned over the years. You can check out more videos right over there. And also click subscribe so that you can watch all of these videos, get that knowledge, and become my next millionaire student.